Newly obtained bank records point to more shady dealings with the Biden family. A Christian high school gets banned from activities for not being woke. Plus, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer says lockdown rules may have gone too far. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and the entire Biden family, actually, because more and more members seem to be involved in influence peddling operations involving hostile governments like the Chinese Communist Party. Now, through bank records obtained by the House Oversight Committee, Republican Committee Chairman James Comer and others are learning about cash payments made directly from entities associated with the Chinese Communist Party to Joe, Hunter, and other members of the Biden family. Here's some details from Chairman Comer. Well, two weeks ago, I sent a subpoena to a bank uh, for the bank records for three former Hunter Biden business associates. Uh, Ten days ago, we received those bank records. Uh, we've had time to review those bank records, and I can say that uh, we have a wire uh, that came from China to what looked to be a pass-through account that then went and uh, dispersed various payments to three different Biden family members. So here's what's significant about these records. Unlike other evidence that has been gathered which show payments for business activities, even though the Bidens don't actually do business, what these show are direct payments to these Biden family members. It was coming from two individuals directly linked in uh, with the CCP, very, very close ties to the wow. CCP. And Jeez. then it went through one pass-through account and then directly into three different Biden accounts. Now, these bank records are clearly significant, but they are important not only for what they show, but for the leverage it gives to the House Oversight Committee. In addition to the bank records, there have been a string of what's known as suspicious activity reports that were generated from Hunter Biden's banking activities. The Treasury Department has been refusing to provide those reports, but now that more evidence is piling up against the Bidens, the department is finally releasing that information. Well, the evidence that we've got today on the bank records, we got from a subpoena. I subpoenaed a private bank for those. Now, the evidence that uh, we're about to see are those bank violations. So there's the bank right. violations and the bank records. So I have bank records in hand. The bank records actually gave me more leverage to get the bank violations because the Treasury Department was blocking us from those bank violations because they said they couldn't understand why we needed them. Now we have bank records to show this family was receiving large sums of money from China for reasons unknown. So the Treasury's is like, all right, we'll let you see them. Now. So that's the latest with the corrupt Biden family. And all of this is coming to light because of a Republican controlled House of Representatives that is actually doing its job. All right. Next, let's talk about the problems facing Vermont Christian School. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about Mid Vermont Christian School because it has become the latest victim of the woke radical left. The school's girls basketball team recently forfeited a game because the opposing team features a guy on the team. Of course, this guy identifies as a girl, so that means everyone else has to pretend as well and completely disregard the inherent differences between males and females. Well, this action didn't sit well with the Woke Vermont Principals Association, which has now banned Mid-Vermont Christian School from participating in any sports at all. Here's a statement from Mid-Vermont Christian School. We withdrew from the tournament because we believe playing against an opponent with a biological male jeopardizes the fairness of the game and the safety of our players. She continues, quote, allowing biological males to participate in women's sports sets a bad precedent for the future of women's sports in general. What a great statement. Of course, the entire statement can be summed up as common sense. You, have, you don't have high school, college, pro males compete against females. It's unfair and it can be dangerous. Recall this incident from a high school girls volleyball game from just a couple months ago. That massive spike was from a guy, a guy being allowed to play against girls in girls volleyball. The girl who was hit suffered significant head and neck injuries, but administrators continue to say that this is okay. 
Here's a statement from the Vermont Principals Association. This letter says forfeiting that Division IV playoff game violates VPA policies, which they say align with state law. Those policies, the first and second on the list of rules, commitment to racial gender fair and disability awareness, and policy on gender identity, respectively. This means the Eagles are ineligible to compete in all Vermont sports or interscholastic activities from now on. How many women and girls are going to lose out because of these woke policies? How many will get injured? And oh, by the way, the guy who delivered that spike against the girl now has that clip on his volleyball highlight reel. The whole situation is pathetic. All right, next let's talk about totalitarian Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer from Michigan, who initiated and enforced some of the strictest COVID lockdown policies in the entire country. Of course, she and her family would follow a different set of rules, much like Gavin Newsom in California, but that's a different story. In this case, we're simply talking about the fact that the rules didn't follow the science, and yet left-wing mayors and governors pushed them anyway. Here's Whitmer now admitting that some of the Michigan rules, like prohibiting people from buying certain products, such as seeds, might have been a little extreme. There were moments where we you know, had to make some decisions that, in retrospect, don't make a lot of sense, right? Um, if you went into the hardware store, you could go into the hardware store, but we, we didn't want people, you know, all congregating around the gardening supplies. People said, oh, she's outlawed seeds. It was February in Michigan. No one was planting anyway. But um, that being said, you know, some of those policies, I look back and think, you know, that what maybe was, was, a little, was a little more than we needed to do. In retrospect, no. People knew these rules and mandates were wrong from the beginning. It's just ridiculous. You could go into a home improvement store, but you couldn't buy certain products while you were in the store. It's about as dumb as the mask rule for restaurants where you had to wear a mask from the time you entered until you walked to your table, but then you could take it off while seated at your table. CNN's Chris Wallace then asked Whitmer about lockdowns. Michigan was one of the last states to lift a cap on public gatherings in June of 2021. By comparison, Florida lifted its cap in September of 2020. But the death rate for Florida from June of 20 to June of 21 was 39.6 per 100,000. The death rate for Michigan was 97.3 per 100,000, so more than double. Why did Florida do so much better without the cap than Michigan did with the cap? So what do you think she had to say? Does she admit wrongdoing, maybe following a left-wing narrative not based on science? Of course not. I've seen a lot of reports about some of the numbers that you've just cited from Florida and perhaps the, the lack of confidence in the, act, you know, in the um, accuracy of them. I don't know. I'm not going to weigh in on their policies. I'm going to tell you, I listen to the best experts in the world. Just classic. Question the numbers and credit the experts that she followed. It's now only after these businesses were destroyed, children's lives severely disrupted, and people were targeted for cancellation that they admit, oops, you're right, lockdowns don't work, masks are ineffective, and guess what? The vaccine doesn't stop you from getting or spreading COVID. All right, next here's another example of what's going on at America's colleges and universities. Religion, conservatism, capitalism, and free speech are all under attack. The only thing so-called institutions of higher learning are concerned about anymore is indoctrinating the next generation of left-wing activists. Check out these comments from a Project Veritas undercover video of a professor at Brooklyn College talking about his students. Do you ever just want to shut them down? Shut. You do what? Shut them down. Ooh. The ones that are illogical. Which would be? Religious kids and the potentially right conservative kids. They don't speak from that. They're kind of wrong. And so that's why it's easy to shut them down. Religious kids and right conservative kids. That's who's being shut down. It's outrageous. And yet this guy admits to targeting these kids when he was hired to teach math and science. Here's more. 
So you help influence, basically, you change your vote, right, to make them more, do you, you try, and then you said that you influence them to be more socialist. That's just one example. Here's the assistant superintendent for the East Meadow School District in Long Island talking about what's being done to not hire conservatives. Yeah, so how do you take power away from the conservatives? You chip away. You, chip away. you stop their ins. You stop hiring that, those types of people, which is, you know, you kind of got to be a boy about that. So you hire teachers directly? I am on the side of the, of the teacher hiring process, but we created a whole rubric for the hiring okay in in the light of DEI. wow that's the question that's amazing so right. you have a rubric essentially that is able to weed out the conservatives i don't know how good it is but we try the examples go on and on thankfully we are seeing more involvement from parents and conservatives and it's starting to make a difference the left is in it for the long haul and we must be too all right next so what is the fallout from left-wing education programs? You get left-wing activists, people who don't care about free speech, and people who don't care about using violence, destruction, and intimidation to shut down conservative voices. The latest example of this outrage expressed by students was at UC Davis because Charlie Kirk was giving a speech hosted by the local chapter of Turning Point USA. Some of these protesters who became violent were dressed in all black and carried black umbrellas with them. What is up with the umbrellas? In another part of the video, one guy is spinning it like it's supposed to hypnotize the cops or something. It reminded me of the penguin from the Batman TV series. It's ridiculous, but make no mistake, this is serious stuff. And in the case of UC Davis, the protesters were not peaceful and they were actually encouraged by a college administrator. I've been on tour with Charlie for this uh, past couple weeks and this is by far the most unhinged we've seen protesters. There's protesters at all of these stops, uh, but this time uh, this group of people was blew past the police barricade and then decided to go and break all of the windows in the doors. Uh, thankfully, the riot police were there to uh, to stop them before they made entry into the building. Um, but yeah, this is this is as far as they've, as they've gone. There was a video that the chancellor of the university put out beforehand uh, denouncing the event. And I think it, in my opinion, stoked the flames of this. Uh, and this is the result. You shouldn't have to be afraid of what might happen to you your friends, or your property just for attending a speech. But the left wants you to be afraid. So afraid that you will just stay home. It's up to all of us to keep up the fight and make sure that people who engage in violence and destruction are prosecuted. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Friday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.